good job on it. Good morning. Um, today is an exciting day. Uh, just got some new gear that's arrived. So we have uh, here the 2022 Fanatic Mamba, and uh, I think that's a 37, the new 37 Superhero for 2022. Um, been waiting a bit of time for this. Obviously, COVID and Brexit and stuff have been uh, caused a bit of havoc with the packages coming in, but um, got them now and. As you might have seen, I'm injured, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to kind of um, unpack these toys and um, take a look inside. So we're going to talk a little about them. Um, we're going to then set them up, or how I would set it up, so um, you can get an idea of, of what you get out of these products. There you go. of goodies there. So I guess I should point out that um, throughout the, the Geotone and Fanatic kind of product range, um, the last couple of years, they've really tried to push on the sort of sustainability side of things. And as you can see, um, the uh, packaging of the products is almost entirely um, cardboard and paper, which is um, amazing. I remember a few years ago, they used to be all like bubble wrap and uh, quite a lot of plastic. So it's, it's good that they're sort of making steps forward in that sort of sense. Oh, this is, uh, this is a good feeling. I'm packing a new toy. So I rip it? No, I won't rip it. That is a real deal, isn't it? All right then, so here we got it. New colors this year, and I have to say, they're um, looking pretty mint. They're looking very, very nice. I'm liking the little fades here and the bottom as well. Pretty nice. Feels good. It's, uh, it's a shame getting these new boards because you, you get them and they feel so good. And then after the first session, they're already they're already getting scratched up, especially when I'm going to a rocky spot or something, but um, it's a good feeling getting a new board. Hopefully some of you guys get some. So what have we got here? We've got um, a little thing here telling you guys about their kind of sustainability initiatives, Save Our Playground, which is for Geotone and Fnatic. Um, and it's kind of a, a thing that's been ongoing for the last couple of years. Um, and they're basically trying to create a platform to um, protect the environment um, and yeah the, the whole as we said before the whole kind of thing about these bands is they're trying to work towards creating um, more sustainable products and just in general their whole system of working I think that with the prototypes anyway they're trying to create as, as little prototypes as possible um, so they spend a lot of time kind of um, really refining it before they rather than just blurting out a load of prototypes um, so that's that's really good to good to see. Um, they have some more link, or uh, well they have a link to some more information if you're curious about that. But um, essentially, I think they're working with a, a kind of a climate offset company. So essentially, a lot of their products are, are sort of climate. Is it climate new? Climate climate positive? Climate neutral? Climate neutral? <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, it's great, and I think that the thing to um, to really emphasise is that with the boards um, and the sales as well, and all the products, um, obviously they've got a kind of history of making really light products, um, but they they don't sort of compromise that with the strength. These boards are so durable. Um, I I don't think I've ever snapped a board. A light board is amazing, but if it breaks, then um, Obviously, it's going to cost you some money and it's not good for the environment, so um, that's really cool. Another thing to mention actually is the bio resin, which is kind of something they've been doing um, over the last couple of years in the Cobra factory as well, with I think some other couple of brands. But um, it's basically the resin having using a few more kind of materials in there that are plant based. I think we're going to start building it up a little bit. 
Okay, so what have we got in here? We got foot straps, three, three foot straps come with it. We've got um, three fins for the thruster setup. In the cardboard packaging again. That's, yeah. And here we've got the, the bung. And I believe you get a little kind of manual thing. Um, set up user guide um, and just tells you a little bit of information about um, how to kind of trim your board and how to yeah get the best out of your board which I'll kind of talk to you about. So the first thing to do is get the bung in because um, you definitely don't want to be going on the water without the bung because uh, uh, yeah, your brand new board will get filled up with water. So yeah with the vent sort of bung it's uh, obviously important to put it in but also important not to like over tighten it. I think with the foot straps and the, and the fins um, that you can, you can put pretty tight but just have this so it's you know it's just kind of getting tight. You don't want to like really force it because that might um, ruin it so that's something important. So I think it's important to say that this year the, the shape of the board is actually unchanged from last year. Obviously we've got some new pretty stunning looking graphics um, but one thing they have kind of made a bit different um, or changed with all the, I think, all the wave boards at least this year is the kind of double screw foot straps. So instead of all the other years where you had one screw, you had two. So this is pretty, pretty cool. It's been something I've kind of been waiting a few years for. So having two screws in is gonna basically make it less likely for the strap to twist apart which in turn is going to make it less likely for uh, any of the screws Whoa. <laughs> for any of the screws to uh, snap off. So, um, you know, that's, I think I had one year where the, the screw was a little bit loose um, and you can get caught out when it's one, one screw and it snapped. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem anymore. Um, yeah, secondly, obviously, having these straps really secure is going to give you a really sort of direct feeling with the board um, which is yeah it's just going to make you feel like you're more connected to the board through your bottom turns and top turns so um, that's really exciting to see it's something that um, like Mark and Victor you might have seen in their kind of prototype boards uh, over the, f the last couple of years they've been using double strap double foot strap holes uh, so that's really cool to see I think we won't um, go ahead and put them all in because that will take a bit of time but what I do want to say is like the position of where I put them. For me I think generally I like to have the back strap uh, quite far back. I like to have like my weight on the back foot quite far back on the board so I can use that as a pivot. So I put mine in like, where did I put it? Last hole at the back here. So I'd put it like that and then I quite like to have the straps like quite high and tight, so not that flat, quite high and tight. So instead of putting it to the last hole at the back, I'd put it one sort of forwards to create that nice little arc there. Obviously I'm not super tall, so I don't have my straps like the furthest distance apart. Um, obviously if, you, if you're a bit taller, you'd want them a little bit further apart, so I don't have them too far apart. Um, I think I've got them, here I've got it at one from the back there and then here to give that little arc I put it right at the front like that. Um, so that is my strap positions. Uh, yeah, it's something that sort of you should play around with but I think as they say in the manual they recommend to put them pretty in a pretty neutral position to start with and see how you get on. Um, okay, let's move on to the onto the fins. Obviously, you get the kind of standard production fins that come with this ball, which work absolutely fine. Um, but I've got my my K4 fins that I use in all my balls, which I, I really love. So we're going to put these aside for now. Um, but the the setup as we'll go through now is exactly the same. So here are my fins. Um, I use K4s. Obviously, I use the for my Mamba, which is a 78 litre board. Um, I use the Scorcher 17, that's a 17. And then for my sides, or my fronts, I use the Ezi 10. Um, I just feel like the, you know, these two combinations give me, um, you know, 
with the Scorch you get a lot of speed and drive out of the board and then with the Ezzies I get um, a lot of grip on that top turn so for me this is this is my favourite. Um, obviously K4 have a massive range of little different fins um, for obviously different people's preference. I think these are gonna look gonna fit very very well with this like yellow stripes and fade look at that. That's, whew, that's gonna look good. Obviously first thing to do is unscrew the screws a bit. And what I really like about the Fnatic boards is uh, they have these like little lines here for the fins, um, which really helps for the, the fin positions. You know, you don't have to like draw lines on your board or anything with a pen uh, to know which one, which position you, you want. With these little lines, I know exactly where to put them. Uh, if I take the fins out for traveling or if I get a new board, which is um, it's very, very useful. I had it, yeah. These fronts, quite far back, kind of in line, on the last line, on the last line in the front. The front's quite far back, and I kind of have the, the back center fin quite far forwards. But basically, what I want to do with actually the mamba and the grip is create, make the cluster like quite small um, to give you that tightness. Um, what I find is when the cluster is quite far apart, you get a lot of control, but once you go to turn, the board just doesn't turn, and it, it's really amazing how much difference, um, you know, fin placement can make in a board's performance. These look so sick with the yellow. I'm pretty happy with that. That's about perfect. So what's that like? Basically like two finger widths from the fronts. So yeah, I kind of explained it before, but yeah, this is this is my kind of go-to setup with the with the thruster in the Mamba. A lot of people have kind of seen me using the Mamba last year, and they're like, oh, because I used to ride the the grip and the, and the quad before that quite a lot. And um, basically, I tried it at my home spot in Shoreham. I think it was Nick Baker's board. It was an 84 actually, so it was you know quite a big board for me but I took that out and on not very great conditions and I just knew I had to get it. Um, I think the, the main difference for me between the Mamba and the Grip is um, the turning circle I found was, you know, the big difference in those onshore conditions. So this turning circle was a lot smaller. Um, so you could really go tight and snap it off the top um, compared to the Grip, which was a much more drawn out turn which um, is great when it's really windy or in big waves, uh, but not so much in less ideal conditions. So the other big difference is kind of your riding style. It's a more of a, a tail to, to sort of tail snap riding style, while the grip is very much like a surfboard style on the rails, um, which is you know amazing for great waves and windy conditions. So. I feel like with this ball, which is my big ball, my 78, um, I'm s like completely covered for those less windy days, less ideal conditions. And I've actually got my 68 grip, which is my smaller board, which is just insane when it gets really windy. And down here when, when we get some big days, because um, that's more of a kind of control oriented board. While this, this one is for less wind, it gets on the plane a bit better. Yeah, absolutely love the board. What more is there to say? Move on to the sail. All right, so we got the board out. Now we're going to get a superhero, which they've kindly named, put my name there for me. Uh, obviously, we had, they had two colorways this year, and they always put the colorway at the front here. And I noticed that it wasn't any of the colors out on the website. And I had a look again, and there was actually a new colorway. But this one is like, in between the two colorways. Um, so let's take a look at it. If I can get it open. There we go. Now we got it. Um, so here we go. This is the sail bag. With these bags, I think, for a couple of years now. Um, they're totally, I think, 100% made of 
um, recycled plastic. I think there's about like 30, or like 35 plastic bottles. I'm not quite sure that figure, but something about something like 30 plastic bottles um, put into this bag, which is nice. How should I do this reveal? Should I go sideways? Boom. There we go. Yeah, we got um, this warning sign you can take off because you don't want to be putting plastic in the sea. Um, and this warning is basically talking about the batons, which um, obviously they talk about quite a bit. Um, again, a few years ago, they kind of changed the way they did it. So they're pre-calibrated batons in the factory. So it means, you know, you don't have to touch the batons. You know, for, I mean, it depends how much you use a sail, but um, you probably won't have to look at the batons again after after about a year, maybe after a year when you see a few creases you can adjust them. And you got in the sail bag manual guide, rigging guide with the batten tensioner so after after a while if you think you need to redo the battens then you got the tensioner in there and uh, that's just in that nice little pocket. So we're just rigging the sail up now and this is a new thing for this year which they've been working on. Uh, this whole mast sleeve has no seam, which is really nice because obviously it makes the sail a lot lighter. Um, and I mean, I had a couple of issues with the seams with the mast, and um, obviously now there's not going to be any issues there. That's something that they, well, Adam, who's kind of unfortunately left us now, but um, he was working a lot with Kai, the, the sail designer, um, you know, to working on this new mast sleeve, which. Um, from what I've heard and what I've felt is um, is working really well. So yeah, I'm not going to really make this a, a rigging video because um, I might do a future video on that. But I think what's key to say is that Geotone as a brand over the years have been really working hard to make um, their products as easy to use and to, to kind of build the sale as possible and to tune it so you can get the best out of your products. They've kind of introduced this, the VTS system, which is the visual trim system, which um, yeah makes it really easy to tune your sail. So they got it for your um, harness lines on your boom. They got it for your downhaul, which they've had for quite a few years now, which is so useful for you know for people who don't get to use the product um, every day like the pros do, who have you know get the chance to you know really feel the sail and feel where it works. Um, with the visual trim system, you can just rig it up um, using the system and know it's going like, to just perform amazingly. Um, what's really cool, what's, what's new about this year, is they got the VTS with the outhaul, which is something new and it's something that works with the new duotone booms, which I haven't got at the moment, which is kind of annoying because it would be good to show you guys. Yeah, they got a new boom, which um, with this visual trim system on the sail, you can have you know the perfect outhaul for your sale um, and yeah Geotone this year have released uh, kind of all the new masts and booms but it's really important to note that all the old um, kind of hardware still works absolutely fine so you don't have to worry about having um, the new mast and the new boom to rig the new sails. So here we go got the two new products um, super stoked on how they look this year. They've had a big kind of cycle of testing, especially with the sales over in Maui, because they've had no competitions because of COVID. Um, so they have made like some pretty big improvements with this, including obviously the luff that I talked about. Um, they got some new double seam in here with the uh, load stripes. Um, and yeah, basically they've, they've managed to kind of strip away 300 grams um, so it's 300 grams lighter than last year's version, which is pretty impressive. And um, as, as well as it physically being light, they actually feel a lot lighter because of the changes they've made. Um, but yeah, still, as I said again, Duotone and Fnatic, uh, so with the sustainability, a big part of it is the, is the, you know, the strength of it. So, so they've made the cell a lot lighter, as I said, but um, you know, they don't compromise it with the durability. and. Um, I think Duotone have got the biggest sort of um, monofill panel, um, which is, you know, really important because, especially I find in down the line riding, you're looking through the sail quite a lot um, to, uh, to where you're going, to where you see on the wave. Um, so it's important to have a big sort of see-through area for you to look through, 
but at the same time like the material they use here is really really strong I haven't ever um, you know it gets quite creased um, but it won't actually break which is really amazing Duotone have an amazing um, warranty I think it's two plus three years so obviously that shows a lot about the brand and um, how much they believe in the, in the kind of durability of the products so um, you know if you're buying one of these you're pretty much guaranteed to have um, a long lasting sale which is you know it's a big investment both of these products and they are going to last you. So the superhero is the sort of centered draft oriented wave cell they got two wave cells in the range um, Duotone it's the the superhero we got here and the superstar um, I've kept um, I've been using the superhero for you know a long long time now it's the cell I feel really comfortable with um, I think it's kind of it's almost a bit better for lighter riders like myself and um, maybe heavier riders would prefer the, the superstar um, which the draft position is a little bit more forward um, and a little it's a little bit more of a nervous sail if you like that type of sail and this sail is just you know the control king it's when when it's in these super strong conditions in Pozo, um, you know, it's, it really holds its ground as well as, you know, light down the line conditions. Couldn't wish for a better sale really, so really happy with these products. Can't wait to get them on the water when my foot's back, hopefully. Um, we've got one last thing, it's the stickers, um, which I'm going to go get. Sale stickers for me, it's something I, I really like doing. Um, you know, with the wave, wave kind of riders and the freestyle riders, it's... Um, not something like it's super necessary and that everyone does um, but I think I think it's a really nice touch you know I think it's, it's good to have a number you see in every, every other sports they kind of have a number so I think it's it's pretty cool to have and I like putting the sales stickers on there um, but these stickers are from uh, <laughs> sales stickers are from Southeast signage which have been doing um, my stickers for a few years now and um, it's really amazing to see that this year they've kind of well We've really gone like above and beyond in terms of, um, you know, sales stickers. We use them for a year and then they come off. Um, and you know, the previous years they've, you know, plastic, so not the best thing for the environment. Uh, but Sam, uh, the guy behind Safi Signage, has you know, spent last year, you know, really putting in the research and time to look at new materials. Um, and these are the, the kind of first ones: water-based ink, um, plastic-free packaging recyclable stickers um, which is really amazing to see especially for the the slalom guys and the IQ4 guys who need a lot of stickers so he, he's, um, he's producing a lot of stickers for those guys which um, are much more sustainable than the years before which is really cool so if you ever do need some stickers definitely go over to Southeast Signage and check them out but yeah I'll be taking my time to put these on my new sale and um, I think it's going to look pretty good. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, um, then be sure to give it a like and comment down below if you've got any sort of questions that I haven't really answered yet or yeah, anything else. And uh, yeah, if you're not subscribed already, you know, I'd be really stoked if you could subscribe. We've got some stuff coming up in the future once I've been um, back on the water. And uh, yeah, we've got an exciting project lined up uh, towards the end of the spring. So uh, subscribe and you won't miss it. Thank <laughs> you.